Is your API struggling with pagination? Are your queries getting slower as your dataset grows? Offset pagination might be the culprit. In this video, I'll show you how to implement cursor-based pagination, a faster, more efficient way to handle large data sets in your REST API. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in JavaScript and Node.js. My goal is to help you become a confident and stress-free developer by increasing your skills and proficiency. Let's get started. Let's take a look at how cursor-based pagination works. When a client needs next or previous page, it sends a request uh, to the server specifying next or previous cursor and optionally a page size. The server parses query parameters to determine limit and cursor, a starting point for traversing the records in the database. After the records are retrieved, the server sends back to the client the result and if there are more results in the database, next or previous cursor or both. The client's job is pretty easy. It shows next and previous pages buttons depending on the cursors it receives in the response. On the server side, however, the job is a bit more complex, because in addition to retrieving the data, it needs to determine the cursors. Cursor-based pagination can only work on sequential columns, such as ID or a timestamp. Also, the order of the records is important. Let's assume that we need to present records to a user in an ascending order. So if we need to paginate forward, retrieving the next page, the ascending order should be used. When querying the database for the next page, we need to make sure we're taking one more record than we need to, to determine the new next cursor. If the number of retrieved records is greater than the limit, that means we have more records. We will discard an extra record and assign the last record in the set to be the new next cursor. When retrieving the next page, we will get records that are greater than the next cursor. If we are retrieving records using the next cursor, that also means we have a previous page. So the first record in the retrieved result set will be the previous cursor. In order to get the previous page, we need to arrange the records in the reverse order and get the records that are less than the previous cursor. We will also get one more record than we need to, to know if we can paginate back even further. We will discard that extra record, assign new previous and new next cursors if, we need, if needed, and reverse the order of the retrieved result set, so we can present the records in the correct order to the user. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, let's take a look how to implement it in the code. But before we do that, if you are learning something new from this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I am in Node.js Express project. This is a task manager REST API that has tasks and projects as uh, main entities. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description below. Tasks and projects in our application have CUIDs or collision resistant unique IDs. CUIDs are not sequential. A sequential column in our database is created at that is a timestamp. Therefore, we will use created at as a cursor column. In one of our previous videos, we introduced repository pattern. If you would like to learn how to do it, please check the repository pattern video. Let's go to repository.ts file in the SRC data repositories folder and update iQuery parameters interface to include next and prev cursors instead of the offset. We will also create iTest query result and iProject query result interfaces that include next and previous cursors. Now, instead of returning arrays of tasks and projects, list tasks and list projects methods should return iTest query result and iProject query result types, respectively. Now we need to update the actual implementation of these methods to comply with the interfaces. When implementing cursor pagination, we need to do three things. First, we need to determine cursor, if any sorting order of the cursor column, in our case created at column, and direction for the pagination. We're going to take records that are greater or less than a cursor. Next, we need to fetch records from the database with applicable limit and order. And finally, we need to determine uh, new next and previous cursors, if any. 
The logic for the first and the last step is the same for any entity, whether task or project. Therefore, we can use power of interfaces and put this logic in the parent class so both task and project repositories can reuse it. Let's go to base repository.cs file and define the logic. We will create a protected method get pagination query parameters. This method will check if query has limit and cursor and determine sort order and operator greater than to take records after the cursor or next page or less than to take records before the cursor for the previous page. Another protected method that we defined is get pagination cursors. We will use this method after we fetch the records from the database to determine new next and previous cursors based on number of records we fetched, sort order and existence of next or previous cursor that was already used to fetch the records. Uh, the logic can be refactored to look better, but I will leave it the way it is so it is more clear. One more thing to note is that after we determine that we have more results, we get rid of an extra record that we fetched. Finally, let's go ahead and update import from a Prisma client to import both Prisma and Prisma client. Uh, we will also import iQuery parameters from repository and we also need to be sure iQuery parameters is actually exported from repository.cs file. Now we can update task and project repositories to use fetch records and use these methods. In the add task repository.cs file, we will import iTaskQuery result and set it as a return type for list tasks method. In the list tasks method, we will remove the existing code and put the following. We will destruct limit, sort order, operator, and cursor from the output of get pagination query parameters method. We will define where variable that will contain user ID to fetch tasks belonging to the user project ID in case we are requesting tasks for a specific project and created ad that can be greater or less than the cursor. We fetch tasks with already determined where limit uh, that is one more than we need and sort order. We call get pagination cursor method to determine new next and previous cursors. Next, we check if sort order is descending, meaning we're going backwards to fetch a previous page. If so, we reverse the order of the fetched results. Finally, we return mapped tasks and new next and previous cursors, if any. In add project repository, we do the same thing. We're going to import iProjectQueryResult and set it as a return type for listProjects method. We will update code in list projects method to do basically the same thing that we did in the list tasks method and return mapped projects, next and previous cursors, if any. Next thing that we need to do is to parse per page and next or previous cursor from the request query string and call list tasks and list projects method with the appropriate query argument. Since parsing pagination parameters from query string is logic that will be used in both tasks and projects controllers, we can define it in the utils file. Also, it is a good idea to base64 encode the cursors, in our case the timestamps, when returning them back to the client. So in utils.cs file, let's first define encode base64 and decode base64 functions. Next, we will define get pagination parameters function. It will take express request as a parameter, no pun intended. It will determine and validate limit based on per page query parameter and next and previous cursors that will be decoded from base64 if present. We will also import request from express and config from config. In the config, we need to define default uh, page size since we use it in, as a fallback in get pagination parameters function during validation. Now we can use get pagination parameters in tasks and projects controllers. Let's go to tasks controller. We will import encode base64 and get pagination parameters functions from utils. In the list tasks function, we will call get pagination parameters with a request as an argument. 
uh, we call repository list tasks method with the destructed output from get pagination parameters function. Finally, we will return the response back to the client containing the tasks from the list tasks methods result and base64 encoded next and previous cursors. In project controller, we'll do the same. We will import encode base64 and get pagination parameters from utils. In the list projects function, we will call repository list projects method with a query object containing the outputs of get pagination parameters utility function and return the response to the client containing projects and base64 encoded next and previous cursors, if any. Finally, in projects controller, we will also need to update list project tasks method uh, so it also returns paginated results for the tasks belonging to a specific project. We are all set. Now we can test our work. In API test.http file, let's make a request to get tasks with a query parameter per page equals 3. As you can see, we got the first three results with the next cursor. Let's use this next cursor to request the next page. Now we got both next and previous cursors since there are more results going forward and we also have a previous page. Let's now use a prev cursor as a query parameter and make a request again. You can see that we got the first page, so our code works. As you may have noticed, cursor-based pagination takes a little bit of work to implement and we only did the easiest case where we have a predefined or hard-coded cursor column and predefined sort order. In certain cases, the requirement may be to let user choose sort order. Then in your code, you need to dynamically decide which order is the forward one, ascending or descending. In our example, the forward one was ascending. Another complication can arise if the requirements are such that users should be able to sort using different columns, like updated ad or processed ad. In that case, uh, not only the order becomes dynamic, but also the cursor column as well. In addition to that, it is a good idea to index your cursor column, unless it is a primary key, since it will be sorted. In our case, we should index created at if we're expecting to have a really large number of tasks or projects. Finally, you can run into situations where a cursor column, although sequential, can have duplicate values. This can cause incorrect pagination behavior where records might be skipped or duplicated across pages. The solution is to use an additional tiebreaker column such as ID. So you will have to sort uh, by both created at and ID and your cursor will be the values of created at and ID together. You can separate them by a pipe or underscore before encoding to base64. Although cursor-based pagination scales and can be a good choice for such use cases as infinite scroll or long-running data expert, you have to be aware that implementing cursor-based pagination correctly takes a lot more work than offset-based pagination. As a rule of thumb, offset-based pagination is the preferred choice for most projects, and in my experience, only about 20% of my projects have required cursor-based pagination. If you are interested in learning how to implement offset pagination, be sure to check out this video next.